All right, chapter 37. One of my favorite ones. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry bones. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I'd say the bones of the people. In slumber. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring of flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put your breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and I prophesied. There was a noise and behold a shaking in the... There's a bell going off over there. And I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone. And when I beheld the sinews in the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them and there was no breath in them. So it's like bodies with no breath. They're just all laying on the ground. So they were bones, then they got skin, and then there's bodies laying on the ground, no breath. And then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind, Thus saith the Lord God. Ah, the four winds. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up on their feet, an exceeding and great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off from our parts spread out all over the planet. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. So on a three-level teaching, I'm not sure which level this would be, but on this, when King David put the slumber prayer on everybody, that they have eyes you can't see and ears you can't hear, that's kind of one way. Or he says, among the dead, like a, even though you're alive and walking around, but you, you, you're not connected, you don't have, his spirit's not in you. You're dead. So when you wake up, he's living in you. The spirit's in you. And then imagine the whole house of Israel, an exceeding great army, all on the right side, all figuring out, you know, it's not because they're so good, it's because he promised. And we got another chance, and maybe this time we can make him proud. So that was 3711. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. Therefore, we are cut off from our parts. 12. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and I will cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit, see that's, where yeah, that's how you come alive, and shall put my spirit in ye, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land, and then ye shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Some people say that already happened in 1948. It's probably the beginning of it, and it but there's two baskets of figs. There's good and bad. All have a chance. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah, 
and for the children of Israel and for his companions, take another stick. Okay, so there's two sticks. This is my favorite part of the book. I love this book. So one is Judah, and it's for the children of Israel and his companions. And then take another stick and write on it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for the house of Israel and his companions. So Joseph and Judah are the two sticks. Then you tie them together and you put the stick in God's hand. And when the children of the people, um, okay, there it is. So I should probably do 16 again. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and the children of Israel and his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph the stick of Ephraim and for the house of Israel and his companions, wherever we live. And join them one to another into one stick, that they become one in my hand. So when Judah and Israel are one in God's hands, he takes it and he's ready. He's going to beat the world. Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and will make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereupon thou writest shall be in thine hand before thine eyes. 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen wherever they have gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king to them all and they shall be no more two nations neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols nor their detestable things how come? Because they were all dead, and then he brought them back to life, and then he puts his own spirit into them, which guides. They all change because he's in them. He's in everybody. He's in the house of Israel. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them, so they shall be my people, and I will be their God. 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And this, and King David was king a long time ago. This is Ezekiel. So it's future. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd. And they shall also walk in my statutes. And what is Christ? Christ was from Jesse, Obed, David and they say he's from the line of Judah probably from David and they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant wherein your fathers have dwelt and they shall dwell therein even they and their children and their children's children forever and my servant David shall be their prince forever Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them and set my sanctuary in the midst of them. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary be in the midst of them evermore. All right, now we're into the big ones, chapter 38. Getting ready for some fire.